Crested Butte is a charming mountain town in south central Colorado. Captivated by the stunning scenery, early stakeholders named one clutch of nearby peaks the Paradise Range. Crested Butte's roots at the turn of the last century are in mining, specifically coal mining. You can still see evidence of that mining in coal piles outside town. For years, the abandoned site of the peanut mine was an eyesore that locals knew needed to be cleaned up, just one of many. Then a coal fire at the peanut site caused by spontaneous combustion turned something that was merely ugly into a top priority environmental and public health hazard. A small group of townspeople trying to get the peanut mine site reclaimed now had the expertise and the support of several state and federal agencies, including the Colorado Department of Natural Resources, the Colorado Department of Public Health and Environment, the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, and the Office of Surface Mining. Private sector support also came from the Gates Foundation. This is the story of how those townspeople and agencies went about reclaiming paradise. What a special place this is. Scenic mountains, a reflecting lake, aspen integrated into pine trees and open skies. Together they form a unique gateway to a wilderness appropriately called Oh, be joyful. Hi, I'm Sandy Leinsdorf, and I'm standing on the peanut mine site at the Lower Loop outside of Crested Butte, Colorado. I grew up in this county. I'm the member of a ranching family that's been in this county since the late 1800s, and I love this place. Today, I'm going to tell you about a mining reclamation project that the Crested Butte Land Trust did with the community. Sometimes I bring people out here and tell them that there was a mine here. There was a coal mine and there was a silver mill site here where they milled the silver and created toxic waste that was left abandoned in this area and never cleaned up. I'm Steve Renner. I'm with the Colorado Division of Reclamation, Mining and Safety. I work for the Inactive Mines Program and my title is Senior Environmental Protection Specialist. Prior to reclamation, this was a canyon. The near side of the canyon was by these small aspen trees, and the far side of the canyon is the high point on the back side of the disposal area. So prior to reclamation, this was a location of silver mill waste. In 2002, I was the president of the Crested Butte Land Trust, and we made it our mission to purchase this property and clean it up. One of our board members was local attorney Jim Starr. We were very concerned when the Crested Butte Land Trust purchased the property. We weren't sure if we would be reclaiming it or not. We came to realize if we didn't do it, who would? And John Hess, who is the Crested Butte Town Planner, was instrumental in finding the money and helping connect the administrative dots. Most of what I did is I worked on the Environmental Protection Agency grant and wrote that and that I believe that was the first grant that EPA had granted for a brownfield site outside of an urban area. So this was the first mining grant. There is coal and silver ore on the west side of the, of the Lower Loop Trail, and that periodically would catch fire, obviously presenting a public health and safety issue. On the east side of the Lower Loop Trail was hundreds and thousands of cubic yards of silver mill waste. That created pools of bright red acidic water after snowmelt and after rains, and then as it dried, it would give off a, a sulfurous rotten egg smell. This spot right here was disgusting. There were pools of orange and red nastiness that nothing grew in. There, were, there was a terrible metallic and acidic odor when you walked through here. You were afraid to let your dog wander into that area. There was fear of cattle walking through there. We also had a real concern because the water that was coming out of the mine entrance ran through all of that tailings and became very polluted before it got down to Peanut Lake. And there is a beaver dam that separates Peanut Lake from the Slate River. And if that beaver dam ever breached, all of that toxic heavy metals from the bottom of the lake conceivably could have gone into the Slate River and we would have been liable for it. We started breathing more easily about the thought of reclaiming this site when we learned about the voluntary cleanup program that was sponsored by the state. It absolutely allows you to do what's right and good without concern from downstream water users, a governmental entity, or adjacent landowners. And it, it frees you of that liability exposure.
The goal of the reclamation was to recreate the natural landscape so that the peanut mine site looks like the, the property down the road that's never been mined or the property up the road that's never been uh, touched by mining or other ground uh, disturbances. But the concept was basically to take the material that we didn't think was appropriate to have out on the surface of the ground and bury it and put a uh, limestone underneath it so you could catch any, if anything came through that you didn't want that would be caught in the limestone and cap it with uh, dirt and, and then seed that whole area and plant trees. Uh, it's, the concept is really pretty easy. The lower loop gets a tremendous amount of use on a daily basis. Hikers, joggers, cyclists, a uh, few people drive up and down. Presented some complexity to the project because we needed to move about 50,000 yards of coal refuse from the west side of the lower loop trail to the disposal area on the east side. So we had a tremendous amount of traffic control work we had to do to make sure that no one was injured, but that construction traffic could move freely. Um, so that was sort of a challenge. But it also presented a great opportunity in that we could talk to people about their reclamation progress on a daily basis and um, they could become involved in the process and understanding what it was we were doing day by day. Since the reclamation was primarily completed, we are very happy with the results. We've had no erosion from water coming off of the capped area. A lot of the plant life has come back. Most of the plantings we have done have been successful. When we planted the trees, uh, we had planted 4,700 trees at the very end of 2005. And I think we had about 75 people show up to uh, plant those trees. A lot of them from the Department of Natural Resources, but a lot of them from our community. It was really awesome. You know, um, had all these, the, had a bunch of local people here. And I planted like three trees and everybody else planted 4,500 trees or something. I was just walking around. I was just, it was just like, Man, it really happened. It really, truly came together. And it's just, it was an incredible feeling. It was neat just to see the, the capstone of the whole project come together and people into it and, and making it happen. Of all those things I've done over the years, this is one of the most really rewarding things I've been involved in. It's, it's what we leave to our children and our grandchildren, our legacy. Because they're not making any more open spaces like this in the West. Our time is up, the clock is ticking away on land preservation. And this land, in protecting it for this community and for the state and for the future and for our kids, is an essential component of the mission of the Crested Butte Land Trust and me. My pieces of advice were, would be to have a vision, uh, never lose patience, and keep focused on your goal. And uh, no matter how um, no matter what roadblocks might be put in your way, just you know, be persistent, make it happen. Everybody won. The community won, agriculture won, recreation won, the environment won, everybody won. <laughs>